Well, let's talk now to Nina Jankovic, who's an expert on Ukraine and Russia at the Wilson Center. Thank you so much for being here on the program. It is being reported in the last few moments that uh, Anthony Blinken and Sergei Lavrov will actually meet in Geneva on Friday. They've been talking on the phone uh, a little earlier today, but news of more talks coming on Friday. But the, the tension continues to rise. Your assessment, first of all, on news that Anthony Blinken is heading today to Ukraine. Well, I think, Matthew, this is an indication to the Ukrainian government and the Ukrainian people that the United States and its allies stand behind Ukraine at this moment, that we are watching what's going on in the region and we're not going to be taken unawares like we were in 2014 when Russia first invaded. And I think that's an important reminder for all of your viewers that this is Russia's conflict. Russia instigated it. Russia has invaded before and annexed illegally the peninsula of Crimea. Um, and now this instigation is being totally controlled by Russia, and Russia is the one that has the power to bring it back. So I think that is the message that will be sounding not only uh, in Kyiv this week, but also in Berlin when Secretary Blinken meets with the Germans, the French, and the British, and then again in Geneva when he meets with Foreign Minister Lavrov. You talk about the British. The UK Defence Secretary was writing in The Times and uh, was accusing President Putin of using straw man arguments. I've seen similar sentiments in the US with officials expecting some fabricated pretext uh, from the Russians for an invasion. What are you seeing on, on all of that? Yes, absolutely. Well, I work as a senior advisor to the Center for Information Resilience, which is a UK nonprofit that looks at countering disinformation and uncovering uh, all of these nefarious narratives that Russia and other adversaries put out. And what we've seen is an uptick in rhetoric that NATO and Ukraine are being aggressors. Now, that is not gaining much purchase within uh, Russian society, but we've seen Russian officials repeat this over and over. And we just heard uh, Jens Stoltenberg say before before we began speaking that NATO is a defensive alliance, right? There is no threat to Russia from uh, NATO being on 6% of the Russian border. And this is a fabricated conflict that Russia is using to try to boost the popularity of the Putin regime at home. Before, we've seen incursions into Ukraine and help in Syria and Venezuela really boost Putin's popularity rating. And I think he's banking on that right now. But yes. I would remind Mr. Putin that, uh, you know, Russians coming back in body bags and the economic cost of this conflict is not going to be something that the Russian people support. NATO warning of the high cost again today. I mean, in terms of potential sanctions, you have potentially the Nord Stream 2 pipeline uh, uh, policies around that or even the nuclear option around ejecting Russia from the SWIFT banking network. Uh, how painful could the West make it if there was some sort of invasion? Well, I think that's another reason we're seeing Secretary Blinken travel to Berlin after Kiev to make sure that the allies are all in agreement about the next steps to take. I think certainly we will see, hopefully, the, the shut off of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Right now, the infrastructure is there, but it's not turned on. Germany has been reluctant to agree to that in the past, but I think with this invasion looming, they might agree to it in the future. The U.S. has taken the removal from the SWIFT banking system off the table, but I think what we might see is some sanctions of prominent Russian banks and prominent Russian individuals. Uh, the U.S. Congress has even floated sanctioning President, President Putin himself. So I think a lot is on the table. And uh, unlike in 2014, we see a lot of forethought and a lot of coordination between Western allies ahead of this potential conflict. One sentence, if I could uh, just push you on it. Do you expect, anticipate Russia to pull back or not? I'm a little bit worried right now, Matthew, especially with the uh, sending of troops to the Belarusian border with Ukraine. That means we've got troops on uh, one and a half sides of Ukraine. And certainly we saw these cyber attacks this week as well, which pre preluded uh, other conflicts in Estonia and Georgia um, several years ago. So I think we've seen this playbook before. And as a Ukraine watcher and a Russia expert, I am worried. Nina, we have to leave it there. But uh, great talking to you. Thanks for joining us.